everybody, it's Melissa. I just got back from Sephora and I tried 12 fragrances that y'all have been really asking me to try. And I'm just gonna be telling you my first impressions of how I thought they were. Now, there were a couple that I threw on skin and for the most part, the rest of them, I was only able to try on test strips. And in case you didn't know with Sephora, they no longer offer samples. I think only Macy's does that. I was talking to the associate and they said they stopped after COVID because people were just being too wild with it. It like, I guess some people got disrespectful with it. And I don't know, some people would literally bring in empty vials and like try to spray the testers. So now at least on the men's side, at least the location I went to with the masculine fragrances, those things are, they have that, it's not a wire, what is it? You know when you go into Apple or something and then the phones are attached by that wire so you can only pull it a certain extent or amount? That's what they have on like <laughs> the section with the masculine fragrances. On the feminine side, there's there's none of that. So I think there was also a lot of people trying to, a lot of guys trying to take the testers, which is like, just get your bag up. But anyways, I'm gonna be telling you what I thought of these fragrances and I did not look at the notes of any of these scents. This is just going off of whether I liked it or not initially. All right, so the first fragrance I'm going to talk about was Y Le Parfum. So this is a scent that I've actually tried in a sample before. And I think I have a video on this channel just like showing y'all like me trying it for the first time. And I really didn't care much about it. I kind of forgot about it. But when I applied it today on a test strip, I thought it was really nice. And I think I took a note that well, fresh, versatile. I know that that doesn't seem like a lot to go off of, but again, you gotta remember, this is just that initial impression of, okay, let's see if I smell these fragrances. Are they likable? Are they gonna have people just kind of going, ooh, yeah, that's really nice. Or is it, yeah, it's nice, but I don't really care about it, right? It's just, there's somebody wearing a fragrance around me. So with Wild Le Parfum, it's so interesting because like I've said so many times before, I've noticed that whenever I try samples of fragrances, for the most part, I don't really care for them. The samples don't really do it for me. I don't know what it is, okay? It, for some reason, whenever I try them with the full-size bottles, I always have a different sort of reaction. Is it because there's more fragrance that comes out of the automizer? Maybe, but yeah, I just, I liked Le Parfum, like why Le Parfum this time around versus the first time I tried it. I found it super forgettable. Now, I still believe that Y Le Parfum is one of those blind buy worthy fragrances that if you were to gift it to somebody that you knew, they would not be upset at it. Very easy to like, super mass appealing, not challenging. The only problem with it would be that it smells generic and there's no personality behind it. But as I've told y'all before, the personality part, that's all on you. You know, you just smelling good is an extra bonus. So if that's just all you need is a scent that smells nice, smells masculine, that you can wear anytime, anywhere, you can get Y Le Parfum. I still also recommend the EDP as well. Both of those I feel like are blind by worthy just off of smell. The next fragrance I tried was Born in Roma Intense. Been getting a lot of questions about Born in Roma, that whole entire lineup. And it was, I mean, it was good. And I'll talk about Born in Roma and the Intense. The Born in Roma, I didn't really like as much. The Intense, I thought was better, but they were still pretty forgettable fragrances. If you were to ask me, well, what did it smell like? It just smelled like, kind of like a cologne, you know? Just, you know, when, when, when people say, I get so overwhelmed when I go shopping for fragrances because I'm smelling so many things that at, at the end, everything ends up smelling the same. That's kind of like Born in Roma is, yeah, it, again, it smells good, but it didn't make me go, oh, wow. It was just, okay, it's, it's a tip, it's a generic type of guy's fragrance that they throw out. And again, still good. Still something that's gonna get a majority of people compliments, which is what most people want. They just wanna smell nice. They don't want it to be challenging. So in that regard, if you had to pick between Born in Roma and the Intense, and you really love them, I would just say go for the Intense version. That's just how my initial impression of it was and again i don't have the dry downs of any of these fragrances except for the ones that i have on my skin after a couple hours okay so please read the title it says first impressions whenever people see that for some reason they still just skip over it all right eros parfum 
and Eros EDP. So I have Eros Parfum right here. And I have Eros EDP here. I think the EDT is better. Straight up. I, I know that this is a different concentration. I know that a lot of people love Eros. And they've been talking a lot about the Parfum. I want it to be stronger. I think the EDT is a better smelling fragrance. I think it has good projection. And I think especially if you're youthful if you're in high school and college eros edt is great and i still had amazing performance with that for an edt fragrance a lot of people like to slam edts they're like oh they're weak might as well just get the edp the parfum and i don't believe that i think it really if you look it up on google then yeah you're gonna see okay it's less concentration of perfume oil right but it really depends on the brand and sometimes even the specific fragrance because there are some EDTs that perform way better than the EDPs. They smell better than the EDPs, but people are just so stuck and fixated on the certain concentration that they think, okay, if I get the EDP, it's just the EDT, but stronger. It's not the case. Okay, so yeah, I'm smelling the EDP on my arm. I don't know. I just don't really... Even the Parfum, right now they smell the same. The EDP and the Parfum they're drying down the same. So if there is like a, a big price difference between them, I could like, honestly, you could just go for the cheaper one, but I would still recommend the EDT. There wasn't a time that I tried both these fragrances where I was like, oh man, yeah, I would much rather prefer this over the EDT. The EDT has that mint. It has that apple, beautiful vanilla in it. Um, it's a fun party fragrance. And these two are still good, but kind of how I felt about Eros Flame. I just still like the original eros edt better that's just how i feel about it all right next fragrance the favorite one that i tried was called light blue summer vibes by dolce gabbana i tried both the masculine one and the feminine one the feminine one really reminded me and i have it right here it really reminds me of light blue intense for women truly i i can't i cannot spot the difference if somebody were to tell me that they were wearing light blue intense and it was summer vibes instead and again this is the women's i wouldn't i wouldn't be like are you sure i would think oh okay yeah you smell fantastic it smells super good lemon apple musk definitely what i'm getting with the the dolce gabbana fragrance that i currently have um so that one is a thumbs up and i will say i was with my sister and my cousin and when they did smell that one on me they were like oh i love that they're like that smells really good and my sister clocked it too she said that kind of smells like Light Blue Intense, the other one that you used to wear. And I said, it does, doesn't it? It's a different flanker, but it smells similar. She's like, yeah, I like that one. Now, when it comes to the men's one, I actually really liked it off initial impression. That was my favorite one that I tried out of everything with that first spray. I was hooked with it. And that's, that's the thing with the summery fragrances for me is that they always do something because, I mean, today it's, it's a beautiful day. There's not a cloud in the sky right now. It's warm. It's nice. It's just makes you want to go to the beach. So I love fragrances that kind of bring that out of me where I'm like, damn, I want to go to the beach right now. It just it smells so fresh, so clean and in a good citrus. But I liked it in the opening. It was nice. Even right now, it's, it's, it is a, it's a more masculine fragrance. Still good. Um, when I was with my sister and my cousin and I had them smell both, I didn't say, you know, which was which, which was the, the feminine or the masculine one, but they both liked the women's one better, just smell wise, not so much about like, oh, what I would wear, but they just thought the smell of the women's one was better. But I think that I, I like, I enjoy the way that, sorry, my nose is itchy right now. I like the way that the masculine one smelled, especially in the opening of it as it's dried down. It's good. It's still good. And what my sister said is when she smelled the masculine one, she was like, she says, I feel like that would, that could take a terrible turn. I think when I, she's like, I can just imagine people wearing that fragrance and it, it mixing with their BO and it just smells so bad. And I said, you know what? I can, I could see that because sometimes people don't actually get cleaned up. They just want to throw in a fragrance to cover something up. And if you use light blue summer vibes to do that, it's a recipe for disaster. So she definitely... <laughs> She didn't like that she could envision that, and she preferred the light blue uh, summer vibes for women. But yeah, this one's, it's, it's nice. I kind of wish it stayed more like how it was in the opening. The dry down is, it's like, it's kind of okay. All right, 
Next fragrance is Dior Homme Cologne. I still, out of all the Dior Homme's, 2020 is still my favorite. Dior Homme Cologne. Yeah, it's fresh. It's, oh, it really, I wrote on my notes, okay. Just like, okay. Again, you buy it for somebody, cool. Um, there's just, there's a lot of fragrances that smell like that. And I can't really differentiate it. It's not something that if I were to smell it, on somebody, I'd be like, oh, that's Dior Homme Cologne. But if they were wearing it, I'd be like, okay, yeah, that person's wearing a fragrance, you know? So it's, it just gives, it's the shoulder shrug type of scent of, yeah, like it's, it's there, someone's wearing something. All right, next fragrance. This one, actually, there's a couple that surprised me. This one was Phantom. I have been waiting to try Phantom by Paco Rabanne. This one, whenever I would go to Macy's Ulta Sephora, it was empty. It was always, always empty. I don't know what it is. I, I think it got really popular with high school students or middle school boys to a point that like they were literally, remember what I was saying about the vials trying to like fill stuff up like that. And now with Sephora, they don't allow <laughs> any more, any more samples. But I don't know if these kids were like actually spraying themselves with the scent. Oh my gosh, I'm going to sneeze. I lost it. But it, I, I can understand why. It, it surprised me. What did I put here? I said it was surprisingly sweet and fruity. Yeah, I think when I was expecting that sort of fragrance to kind of have a typical shower gel sort of vibe, but it didn't. It took a sweet turn, a little fruity, and I was like, you know what? I'm rocking with it. I, I thought it was good. I think it's definitely a compliment getting fragrance. Is it something that I would add to my collection? No. Is it something that I would recommend for my followers? Yeah. And the thing is, everything that I have mentioned, I would 100% still recommend to you guys. Like, especially for people that are asking for a designer fragrance, they want my opinion on Born in Roma or Light Blue Summer Vibes. I would still say, yeah, you can absolutely get it. If, especially the people that are like, I'm looking for my first fragrance and I like this one, what do you think? I would say absolutely grab that because it's something you know you'd be happy with. It's a good, safe choice, and there's nothing wrong with having a safe bet and a safe choice for your first fragrance. All right, next fragrance. So I already talked about Light Blue Summer Vibes for Women. Matcha Meditation by Replica, Maison Margiela. It surprised me as well in that there was, it didn't smell matcha-ish at first. It was very much floral. So I gave it a couple more sniffs, a few more sniffs, let it sit for a second. And then there was something sweet in the background. And I'm like, it kind of smells chocolatey, but at the same time, it's not chocolatey. And then it finally clicked to me. I'm like, this smells like white chocolate. I was like, it smells like florals and white chocolate. That was basically what I was getting from Matcha Meditation. I did not initially get anything matcha dominant in there but then again people are very particular about their matcha like people super into it know how it smells distinctly like they they don't play about that when it comes to the starbucks ones or or wherever you get your your commercialized matcha lattes or something a lot of people are like oh that's only like 50 percent. the rest of it is filled with sugar but the actual smell of the matcha they go nuts for it. And I was, I remember talking to this girl that loves, like she loves matcha. And if I remember correctly, she was saying that matcha meditation smells like authentic matcha. So maybe for all of you matcha lovers, that would be a great fragrance. And the thing is, I found it to be something, it's, it's unisex. A lot of the, um, the replica fragrances are unisex, but I found this one, I can, Immediate, I immediately pictured it on a woman. Like if I hugged someone, I, I hugged a woman and she was wearing this fragrance, I'd be like, oh, she smells good. It, it's not synthetic. It has, it still has a little bit of its own personality to it. It has a, that, that little extra difference that will set it apart from like your typical sort of perfume where you're like, okay, this one smells. That's a little bit more unique, still very good, but unique. Right, so for all of you that love matcha, I would recommend it. Do I, is that a fragrance I would wear? Probably not, but it's a fragrance I would compliment if I smelled it on somebody.
that I was hugging. I hope that clears it up. Okay, next fragrance, Versace Pour Homme. Or Versace Pour Homme is, from what I remember, things could have changed, but earlier in my fragrance journey, that was a scent that was pretty affordable. I think you can you could have gotten a full-size bottle of that fragrance. I'm talking, well, you know, maybe it was the 50 ml, not the 100. Or maybe it was the 100. Uh, it's slipping my mind right now, y'all, but it was in the $40 range. And again, for a legit designer fragrance in between a $40 to $60 range, that's pretty good, right? So I tried it again because the first time I did like it, um, but I'm like, let me revisit this scent because from what I remember, it was it was good, it was wearable. And I still feel the same way about it. I think I feel a little bit better about it now than I did before, where I think Versace Pour Homme is, again, a great blind buy fragrance, not just because of the price, but it smells really good. And it's also for a lot of people that live in warm weather. So if you're looking for your beachy fragrance, right, or if you like to go swimming a lot, or, you know, it's springtime right now, but summertime's around the corner, and, you know, it's everybody loves a hot summer, right? Everybody loves that sort of stuff. So if you want a sexy fragrance to keep up with you and your sexiness, Versace Pour Homme will do that for a good price. And by the way, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I'll put a discount link where you can search up these fragrances pinned in the comment section below if you guys want to support the channel. Now, you don't have to buy from there if you don't want to. I'll just have it for anybody that wants to use it, but know that that's an affiliate link. So if you do make a purchase off that link, I get a slight bit of commission just to be totally transparent. So buy however you feel the most comfortable, all right? The next fragrance I'm going to talk about is One Million Elixir. And I didn't really want to try any of the One Million fragrances because the the parfum, <laughs> the One Million parfum was, uh, it smells good, but it was so strong and it was very headache inducing. I, I ended up buying it for uh, my, my sister's boyfriend a while ago for like a gift for Christmas. And we liked it because, you know, One Million has a very good opening note. It, it's, it's amazing. It really hooks you in. Um, but then it was just too cloying, right? So I was thinking to myself, I already know that I like One Million Lucky. I'm not going to retry it. What's next to it? One Million Elixir. I heard a lot about Elixir. Let me just give my first impression. So I actually liked the way One Million Elixir smelled from the jump. I, I think, what did I put here? I put a similar a similar description to Phantom, which is pretty funny, but fruity, sweet, good. And before anybody is like, you need to give more description. Listen, there's a lot of people in a Sephora. Sometimes I'm smelling things that I just wanna remember. Okay, I remember this one was sweet, but one million elixir, what I can tell you is you're not gonna have to really worry about the performance there. The one million lineup, has pretty good performance. So for all of you that are complaining about, oh, it never lasts, I promise if you're wearing one million, it does. You do not need to overspray that fragrance. More people need to know that going nose blind to your scent is very common and it's going to happen regardless of what you're wearing. So if you wear a scent and you can't pick it up after 10 minutes and you can't smell it on yourself, that doesn't mean it's not there. It just means that your nose got used to the smell already. So for safety reasons, it's staying on alert for other smells around you because it already knows that your scent is there. It's the same reason that your eyes have already adjusted your vision to not notice your nose right under you every single time. And now if you look, you could obviously see that your nose is there, but it's the same reason. Like imagine always seeing your nose in your vision 24 seven, every single time your eyes are open, you know, your eyes know it's there. So it just, it makes the adjustment. Your nose does the same thing with smells. So don't think that your strong fragrance doesn't perform because you can't smell it. It does. Uh, we got already too many people out here over spraying things like Ultramail and Baccarat Rouge, okay? Everybody smells them, but they, they, they don't. So they keep spraying more. Please, just no need to overspray it. We smell you, okay? So all in all, One Million Elixir, the thing is, it does, like it, it's not... One million is known to have great top notes. So smelling it from that test strip, yes, I like the opening, but that fragrance can take you on a journey 
which is why I'm not going to say right now that, oh, it's a blind buy worthy fragrance in the same way why Le Parfum would be, right? Because who knows like the way that that fragrance can turn on skin or if it's, if it gets even stronger or if it gets even sweeter because it's an elixir, right? Elixirs typically do perform pretty well. It, it, they just, they have a level of strength to them that the other the other type of concentrations can't really touch but that's really all i have to say about it again y'all i if i had to pick fragrances from this list that i myself would add to my collection if i had to pick one at first it would have been light blue summer vibes but i would probably go with versace pour Homme because of from what i remember the affordability that it had the versatility that it has and you and again the weather that i live in so if you remember if you're watching this video and you live where it's cold outside you would probably get piss poor performance from versace pour um so please know that but for all y'all that are beach goers like myself like that's just like a go-to thing for you to do yeah throw on that versace pour um sexy summer fragrance all right okay y'all out of everything that i've mentioned give me your thoughts in the comment section let me know which which of these fragrances is your favorite which ones you own and if you feel the same way as me that whenever you try samples of fragrances for some reason they they don't hit the same way that the bottles do and sometimes it just kind of switches your opinion when you smell it from a bottle i'm sure there's a lot of people that feel the same way as me on that and again yeah i'll put i'll put the link there in, in the comment section, it's going to be pinned. Same in the description box as well. And I hope you guys have a great day. All right, take care. Bye.